often, in these times, because the human has stolen their kingdom for cities, suburbs, agriculture and golf courses, he has then offered them a small reserve, and when they cross over or overpopulate their reserve, he must then bring balance and kill these excess animals. Just as was done with your native brethren. You civilized and destroyed their kingdom and then offered them undesirable, to you, reservations to live upon separate from civilization. You must understand that God gave you the animals for food and clothing, if you so choose and need them. He gave you the wondrous vegetables and herbs and plants for food, medicine, and wonderful taste for your survival and enjoyment. Do you give thanks and honor and appreciation every day to the animal, the plant, the vegetable and God for sustaining you physically and spiritually? Do you give thanks, honor and appreciation every day to this wondrous planet, Mother Earth, for bringing you the gifts of beauty and survival she has so abundantly supplied? Let us discuss the care and tending responsibilities of humans to their domestic pets. When you have a pet animal such as a cat or dog, this cat or dog is dependent upon you for his love, his care, and his food. A cat or dog or any animal for that matter, has the group spirit of his species from the creation within him. He possesses the instinctual nature of his particular species. The animal, contrary to what many of you would like to believe, does not possess free will and the same degree of reasoning ability of human beyond his instinctual behavior. Animals are extremely responsive to love, as are all creatures within the creation. They make wonderful friends and companions, and bring lightness, fun and humor to the human. Because of the domestication of these pets, there has been created an interruption of the natural balance mechanism for these animals. They have over-procreated. Many irresponsible owners of these animals have allowed this to occur and have not always wanted to care for the offspring. Many are left to die, spread disease, go wild, or to ultimately end up within one of your humane societies. Fortunately the ones responsible for creating such humane societies understood the need to take care of this exploding population of unwanted animals, especially dogs and cats. It is an orphanage for lost, stray or unwanted animals, and is most sad indeed, because, although the animals are offered for a nominal charge to humans who might adopt them, most are not adopted and therefore are destroyed, usually by euthanasia. It is truly heartbreaking, but surprisingly enough, many of the ones who choose to work for humane societies do so because of their love of animals. Also, most of these humane animal adoption homes require all cats and dogs to be sterilized, as part of the adoption policy. Wouldn't you say then, that it is logical, dear ones, that sterilizing these pets is much more humane and responsible than allowing the continued over-procreation to occur? So you must now think and reason, dear ones, how can you maintain your life in harmony and balance with the rest of this creation? You begin with the pure desire to know truth. In order to come into knowing, you must recognize that your conscious altered ego is limited in its perception of truth and that God knows that best way and the path for you in his service. So you must then surrender your will to that which is God's will. In your daily prayer you must ask God for the loving light of protection, guidance, power, wisdom, knowledge, truth, integrity and courage in order to best serve His will and not your will. Then, dear ones, you must wait upon the Father to give you that which you need to sustain in His service. Do you see? Your will and His will must become one again. For you ones who now see the truth and find your cup is full of the knowledge and wisdom given of the Father, you now also have the responsibility to pass the cup on to your brethren who will accept it. You will find that, for you to move on in your service, the cup must be passed. You, therefore, cannot hold it unto yourself, for it is full and must be emptied to again become full. You cannot sprinkle it haphazardly on all who come in your presence, it must be passed and it must be accepted by the choice of each one. It is not your responsibility to try to give the cup, where it is not accepted. You pass the cup, and ones will refuse and ones will accept, but it is not your concern who does and who doesn't accept. Your responsibility is to pass the cup to those who accept and release the outcome to God who exists within each. So too, those who accept the cup of knowledge and wisdom and drink of the truth will be nurtured and filled with the joy of truth and then they will pass their cup as well. All will be given opportunities to take the cup, if not from you then from another. It is yours to offer it to them and wait upon the Lord. Your cup will again be filled and you will again pass it on, and in this way will you serve the Father who is within all. How to recognize the Antichrist, that which is against God, within. 
Monitor your thoughts, words, deeds and actions for the following clues. 1. Inferiority or superiority thoughts and feelings. Feelings of inferiority or superiority over others will most often manifest as a two-edged sword, meaning both feelings may exist simultaneously. For example, one who feels inferior, perhaps in his performance of some action or deed, may feel inferior, because he has failed to be superior in his own eyes. Somewhere within his altered ego exists the Antichrist setting for him levels of performance perhaps beyond his current capabilities. He then will fight for the rightful superiority he is given to believe he has over others and thus continues to set himself up for failure in his own eyes. This is where the term competition defined as striving against another or others for some object has been distorted in society in such a way where one's personal worth as a human being is measured against his performance against others rather than perfecting his personal best, which is striving in personal ability beyond self-imposed limits. And so it goes that one who is chided by the Antichrist within to feel superior to others will draw from his feelings of not wanting to be inferior, which oftentimes translates to him as rejection of his beingness and unworthiness. This is where fear enters the picture and brings us to our next point. 2. The Antichrist robs you of the now or present moment. It is very simple how this is done. The Antichrist keeps your altered ego in past guilt orientation or future fear orientation. This is how your reality manifestation abilities are controlled. As you wallow around in your past, reliving experiences with regret and self-pity, you cannot work in the present moment to change or create more desirable circumstances. This is why many of you may have heard the great wisdom of forgiveness and release of all past emotional and physical thoughts, words and deeds. One must forgive self and all others. Remember, that this does not mean, that you don't garner the wisdom of knowledge in truth from the lessons of the experience, because that is, why you created the experience in the first place, to grow in your awareness of the truth. The same rule about past orientation is true for those who spend countless hours in reliving pleasant past memories at the expense of living in and creating the now. A rather appropriate cliché along this line says, it's alright to look back, just don't stare. Now, future fear orientation is a big stumbling block for most of all humanity. Fear, in itself is a great separator of the human creature from his creator. Fear is the biggest tool of the Antichrist within. Since the highest command of the creation is to achieve the wisdom of knowledge in as much, as this will enable you to wisely follow all the laws of the creation, then it stands to reason that recognizing the truth in all things, including your immortal connection with God, will vanquish from your being any fear of some future experience, since you, as an immortal soul God fragment are the master of your destiny. You see, fear paralyzes the senses and only can manifest within the being, if he sees himself as separate from his creator rather than a fragment of the one. It is this illusion of being separate from the one that has trapped humans within the false bondage of fear. If one recognizes the truth and is willing to see the manifested illusion, as it really is, one will see the natural balance and inner peace that is achieved by trusting the Father within, and wisely following the laws of balance given by God and the creation. This now brings us to the point of remembering and understanding the law of one. All beings and creations are equal in the reflection of God, only each is different in abilities, talents and beingness as an expression of the one. You see, there cannot exist any separation, all come from the one great source of all, the creation and all will return to our source, the one. Humans exist, as individual fragments of the whole, a fragment of and, if you will, seated with all unlimited potential of God awareness and wisdom. When we love the essence of spirit within all there is no longer any illusion of separation. We are simply honoring God within ourselves and all others. We no longer are separated by our fears and unworthiness. We are God's expression of life, we are the spirit of life itself. 3. The Antichrist tells you, it's not your fault. For example, it is not your fault that your husband is an alcoholic and beats you, or that your parents abandoned you, or that you were fired from your job, or that your government leaders are corrupt, or that we have gone to war and on and on and on.